In this video, we're going to discuss the logical functions and an or, and then we're going to demonstrate how to use those inside of an if statement. And then finally, we're going to talk about creating nested if statements. So on this first sheet, let's talk about these logical functions and an or. Basically, what we're looking at is having more than one condition that must be true or possibly must be false. And if we want two conditions to be true, we're going to use an AND function because it returns true only if all of the tests inside of it are true. Uh, OR condition says if any one of the tests inside of the OR are true, well, then the entire OR function will return true. So realize these two functions, AND and OR, return the words true or they return the words false. That's all they do. So let me demonstrate them. In column G, I want to display true or false based on these two conditions. The store is open, so that's over here, a comment in column B, a yes or no, and it has a clothing display, yes or no. So if both of those conditions are true, then I want to put the word true in this box right here. So because I need two things to be true, it's an AND condition. I'm going to say equal AND parenthesis and how it works is it goes logical one logical two and then dot 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 meaning I can have more than two conditions it, it can go on so in this case I want to know whether the store is open so I test click on that cell type equal and then in quotes yes the second condition that must be true is the fact that it has a clothing display so I'll click in that cell and say equal quote yes and now we're done so I can uh, close that up and that's how an AND function works. And it's going to return true if both conditions are true. And if I drag that down, it will return false if any one of them are false. So here's a situation where the uh, store is open, but no, they do not have a clothing display. And of course, both of these are false, right? There's a no and a no, so that returns false also. Now, let's go in and try to solve our selling potential one of these three conditions are true. So only one of three conditions needs to be true, and then we view this as having some selling potential. So because it's we want one condition to be true, we're going to use an OR statement. So uh, is the weather warm? We'll go right here, and we're asking uh, yes in quotes, and then comma. That should be an equal sign, obviously. Now we'll go on to our second logical, which is, is the children's section. Do they have a children's section? So that's this question or this area right here. We're going to put equal and then quote yes again. And then finally, is their volume greater than 5 million? So it's this cell greater than 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Greater than or equal to actually now that I look at that. So I'll put equal. And finally, we'll close this up. So in this case, we had three logicals rather than just the two we had in the previous. And because it's an OR condition, if any one of these is true, the whole statement will go to true. Well, in this case, they all must be false. The weather is warm, no. Children's section, no. And the volume greater than 5 million, no. So that's why it returned false. But let me copy it down. All the rest are true except here again. Children's section, no. There's zero volume, and then the clothing display is no. Or I guess it was the weather is warm is the other one, is no. So anyway, that's that situation. Now, here in shipment, we're going to display a one if we have both G and H are true, meaning one, we're going to do a shipment, and um, zero, we're not going to. So again, two conditions need to be true. So that means we do our and. And right here, we're going to go, well, was this one true? True, you do not put in quotes. So we can just leave that, like the word true, and then we're asking, is this one also equal true? Those are two conditions. So I'm testing whether both are true. I hit enter and recognize that the AND function only returns true or false. If I truly want to dis display a one or a zero, the AND function is not going to do that, and neither will the OR function, because all they do is display true or false. So here's where we start using these functions in conjunction with IF statements. So I will open this back up again, and I'm going to put in my IF statement. And with an IF, you have a logical test that needs to return true or false. Very often we've been doing 
if this cell is greater than some value? Well, that returns true or false. Well, guess what the AND function returns? True or false. So I can leave that alone. And then what am I going to do if that's true? We're going to place a 1 in the cell. Otherwise, comma, we're going to place a 0. So now I actually can get the results I want, the 1 and the 0, and I'll just leave that AND function as my logical test. So nope, we're not going to send a shipment to that one because there's no selling potential. I can copy that down, and I'll get my lists of 1s and zeros for where we want to send a shipment. So next sheet. As I just mentioned, very often ands and ors are used inside the logical test of an if statement in that I need two things to be true or only one thing to be true. Um, before that test will go to true. So in this example, let's calculate the life insurance. The life insurance, uh, we're going to do it here in M, but it's only going to take place if they ask for it and if pay type is e, uh, S. So basically we have two uh, things that need to be true. They need to have yes here and pay type equal yes. So I am going to start with the if statement parenthesis, well, my logical test is the fact that two things need to be true. So I will type and and the parenthesis to start in on the and. So now what are the two things that need to be true? This has to equal a quote y quote. And what was it? Pay type had to be s. So the pay type has to equal quote s quote. Now I put a parenthesis to close up my and and that's the end of my logical test. Those two things have to be true. If that's true, I'm going to take 0.1% times their annual salary. Otherwise, there's no deduction for life insurance, and so we just put zero. So that's what that looks like. You hit enter. This guy is going to get uh, life insurance because he meets the criteria. But then down here where we have all of our H's, we will not. And actually had a situation where he's a zero, but that was because he has a no for the um, wanting life insurance. So let's do it again with the 401k contribution. In this case, we're saying if the employee is pay grade two or three, then we'll contribute to the 401k. And I don't mention in my instructions, but let's just put yes or no in the cell, whether we're going to contribute or not. And the contribution is for those people of pay grade two or three, but if it's a pay grade one, then no, we won't. So I'm going to do my equal if, and this time I have, it's an or condition. It can either be pay grade two or pay grade three. So I'll put my or comp, uh, parenthesis. I'm looking at the pay grade. Does it equal three comma? I can look at that same pay grade and say, does it equal two? It's one of those two conditions. Parenthesis will close up the or, and now I'm back in my if statement, and I'll put a comma because that's the end of my test. And if those conditions are true, um, either one, if that it's a three or a two, then we're going to do yes, we'll contribute. Otherwise, comma, no, we won't contribute. So that's our or condition. Now, just to make it a little complicated or more interesting, what if this was our rule? An employee must be full time and pay grade two or three. Well, we already have the pay grade two or three, but basically what we're saying is we need two conditions to be true. They have to be full time. And the second condition is pay grade two or three. So what I can do is wrap that or clause in an and clause. Okay. And the first condition of my and clause is they must be full time. What's the second condition? Well, this or statement must be true, which is that fact that they are pay grade two or three. So now I can close up the and clause, and one of the logicals of my and clause, the second logical, is an or clause. So two conditions, full time, and this statement needs to be true, which is the fact that it's two or three. So sometimes you can get quite sophisticated with combining ands and ors inside the logical test of your if statement. So if I were to um, double click here, that's going to drag down or copy down. And it may have changed the results a little bit. And that end, what, now they must be full time and pay grade two or three. Now let's take a look at doing nested ifs. So in a typical if statement, 
You have a logical test, and then you have a value of true and a value of false. So basically, if I just have a single if statement in a cell, I can put one of two different values in that cell. The value of some test is true or the value if it's false. But what if I have three or more values that need to be placed in the cell? Well, then I need more than one if statement. I'll have to have a nested if. So to give you an example, here in column M, my, my text is wrong. It should be M instead of P. I want to calculate a bonus based on this table right here. If they're pay grade one, they get 2,500, pay grade two, 5,000, and pay grade three, 7,500. There's three different numbers, or actually four, if you count the fact that if it's not one, two, or three, I want to put the words invalid pay grade. So basically, I've got four different values that could go in that cell depending on what I see over here. Okay, so obviously I need to test. Is it pay grade one? Well, then let's put it 2,500. Otherwise, let's ask if it's pay grade two. And if it's not two, well, then let's ask if it's three. And if it's not three, it's an invalid pay grade. So that's a nested if. So I type equal if. And my first test is, on the pay grade, does it equal one? And if that's true, I'm just going to type 2,500. We don't have a cell with that value in it. So we'll just hard code the 2,500 at this point. But wait a minute. What if it's not one? Well, then I need another if statement. So you literally just type the word if with no equal sign, anything else, and then you open it up with a parenthesis, and here's your logical test again. So I click and go, well, does it equal two? Because if it's not one, let's ask if it equals two. Well, what if that's true? Well, then they get a $5,000 bonus. Great. Well, what if it's not two? Well, then I need to do another if statement. And I'll ask if that cell equals three, comma. All right, well, if that's true, what are we going to give them? 7,500, comma, what if it's not three? Well, now we are at the point where we can say, oh, well, then it must be invalid. If it's not one, two, or three, it's an invalid pay grade. Now, I need to close these up. So you have to pay attention to your parentheses. So the first one will close up the uh, last if. The second one will close up the second one, and the third one close up our very first if, and they're color coded. So you, you can see, or I don't know if it shows up in the video, but purple to purple, and red to red, and then black to black. So now I can hit enter, and that's going to calculate everybody's bonus based on their pay grade. And if there's ever a bad one, then um, it'll say invalid pay grade. So obviously, I have no invalid pay grades, but let's go ahead and make this a five and then it instantly pops into invalid. To be honest with you, nested ifs are very often better solved using a VLOOKUP. I could have made this a table in Excel, right? I could have put pay grade one, two, three, and then the corresponding bonuses. And then a VLOOKUP uh, will get me the right results without having these nested ifs, which are a little hard to fix if something should go wrong with them. And let me uh, do one more demonstration on nested ifs. And it's to recognize, or what I want to point out in this, is that they process from left to right. In other words, it reads the first if statement, and then it, if depending if that's true or false, it goes to the next one. Depending if that's true or false, it goes to the next one. So in this scenario, what we're looking at is the weak supply column. If it's less than four, the action we need to take is rush new orders. We're running out. If it's less than eight, we're going to place a new order, but it doesn't have to be rushed. If it's greater than 10, well, let's not, let's delay the orders we have. A greater than 15, hold them, and greater than 20, well, we, not, we better start returning crap, okay? So somebody's placed an if statement in here, and let's check the results. So here we say six, that's less than eight, so we're going to place new order. Great. But look at 24. It says delay orders. Well, no, that should be request return. How about three? Three should be rush new orders, and it still it says place new order. So what's going wrong with this if statement? Well, here's the deal. I'll open up this one. The very first if statement says if that blue cell is greater than 10, delay orders. Well, guess what? 24 is greater than 10, so it says delay orders. And yet that's not what we want. If it's greater than 20, it should be request return. So what this person has done in putting in this if statement, they're not paying attention to the fact that they process left to right, 
any number greater than 10 is going to stop right here on the first diff and it's done. Everything becomes delay orders. So if you look through this results, 16, delay orders, 21, delay orders, delay orders, delay orders, right? And so the point I'm trying to make is you have to pay attention to how you write this if statement. Here, anything greater than 15 would be hold new orders. I will never get to this if part because if it's greater than 15, it's greater than 10. And so I get stuck right here in the first if. The same thing happens if, we, if I were to get over here. Oops, I got to double click on that. Let's get to this one with three. So right here, it says if it's less than eight, place new order. Well, guess what? Three is less than eight. So it gets placed in order when that's not what we want. If it's less than four, it should be rush new orders. So the order that you write your if statements matters. So I think I have one written correctly here in one of these cells. I'll run over and change the font to black so we can see it. So this one is written correctly. There's a couple different ways to write it, but you just have to pay attention. Um, and the way I wrote it was to say if it's greater than 20, request return. If it's greater than 15, hold greater than 10, delay. So now if the value is 24, it's going to stop here. But if the value is 16, well, that's not greater than 20. So it will move to the next if statement and go, okay, I'll stop here. Let's say it's greater, it's 12. Well, that's not greater than 15. So it would actually move to the next if and go, oh, here it is. And it'll put delay. Then the same thing with the four and the eight, I had to reverse those. My first question is, is it less than four? Rush no. And then I can ask if it's less than eight. A lot of students will try to do a between. They'll use the and clause because we tend to learn the and clause at the same time. And they'll go, and D12 is greater than four and less than eight. I don't need to have an and clause because if it's less than four, it will stop right here. So when I get to this one, I don't need to ask if it's greater than four. It has to be or else I won't get to that if statement, All right? So you don't need, when you're just comparing values against a number like this, you don't typically need an and clause. It's just, you just got to pay attention to the order that you're putting your uh, if statement together. So that's it. Uh, just in review, remember, if we have uh, a, a test where two things need to be true, I can use an and function. Or if one of two or more things needs to be true, I can use an or function. And very often we're using those functions inside of an if statement. You can use an and or an or function inside the logical test of your if statement. And then finally, when you're uh, dealing with multiple values going inside of a cell, you may need nested ifs. So you just put one if inside of an another, you just type the word if, you don't put an equal sign in front of the second or the third one, depending on how many you have. And don't forget that they process left to right. So how you write your if statement matters. You need to think through the, the logic so that if um, the first test doesn't end up being the only if statement that gets processed. Thanks for watching.